Welcome to another Coding Like Mad Python tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make animated figures like the ones in my recent tutorials. Animated figures are not only more interesting than static ones, they often capture pieces of information that are hard to see in a static image. For example, if you have a time-dependent problem, that time dependency is really best visualized by just watching it move. I think a lot of tutorials in this space really overcomplicate this, so I'm going to show you the simplest way to do this. And the good news is, simplest in this case is also one of the most powerful. The approach that I'm going to show you for how to make animated images is powerful because you basically just need to make a plot in matplotlib and then you can save that figure. So if you know how to make the figure you want to see in each frame, you know how to make a video. You're just going to make those over and over again. So let's get started by making a figure that we would like to make a video out of. To begin with, obviously, we're going to need some imports. I've gone ahead and put those at the top already. First up, I'm going to need some code which is responsible for making a plot. As you can see here, I've created a figure and then created an empty line plot on top of that. What we're going to do is manipulate this line plot in order to draw the shape we're interested in. I find it convenient to define a function for whatever we're trying to plot, so I'm going to do that right here. In this case, it's going to be a sine wave with an amplitude magnification of 3. So let's go ahead and visualize this function so we have an idea of the thing we're actually trying to plot. I'm going to do that just by generating some numbers here. So I'm going to make a list of uh, x values using the linspace command. So we're going to create numbers between minus 5 and 5 uh, with 100 numbers in total spanning that space. And then our y values are just equal to the function evaluated at those original values. I can then set the line plots data equal to the x list and the y list. And let's go ahead and visualize the plot results. If I do that, I can see a figure. Nice and straightforward. Uh, what I would like to do, of course, is not see this figure, but see it animated. So the approach we're going to do for that is by generating progressively larger portions of that graph and creating a frame each time for the video. So the first thing we need to do in order to make our actual video is create a writer object who's responsible for collecting those frames and putting them together in a video. I'm going to be using the pillow writer object for this. As you can see here, the pillow writer object is taking two arguments a frames per second indicating the frame rate of the video, as well as a metadata object containing various useful bits of information about the video itself. Depending on what file format you're using, you're going to want to use different writer objects here. The pillow writer is most appropriate for GIFs, whereas there is an FFmpeg writer, which is more appropriate for MP4s. And I'll show you how to use that in a second. There's a few hiccups with it, which is part of the reason I wanted to make this tutorial in particular. Next up, we need to start creating our figures. In order to do this, I'm going to have each figure generated using a list of data, which is going to progressively get longer. Here, that list of data is stored in an xlist and ylist. Next up, we're going to have a section of code inside of a with operator. This is going to indicate that we want to be saving all of our results from the figure we've indicated into the file sinewave.gif. The 100 there indicates the DPI of the file we're going to be producing. So how do we actually make our frames? Well, the way we're going to be doing this is by generating a series of X values from the linspace operator like we did before. And then for each of these, we're going to add the values to our lists of data. So we add it to the X list. And then to the Y list, we're going to add the function evaluation of that X value. We can then go ahead and set the data as we did before for X list and Y list. And finally, we need to grab the frame. So we do writer dot grab frame. And this is going to automatically grab the uh, frame that's currently displayed in the figure object and save it to the file. 
At this point, we're actually strictly speaking done. This is all you need to make an animated graph. If I go ahead and run this, now if you look in the local directory, you'll actually find a copy of the video. In this case, you can see it here, sinewave.gif. So if we visualize it, what you can see is we do in fact get our animated uh, GIF. And this is all there is to it. All we need to do is make the frame we're interested in, save it to the file, and do this for every frame we want of the video. So if we want to make things more visually appealing, we can of course do things like adding uh, labels to the axes. We can put an X label on there, a Y label, and a title. Basically anything you need to figure out how to do for your animated graph, you just figure out how to do it for a static graph and you can go ahead and make changes to your movie. Of course, all of this was done with a GIF file. What if I wanted to use an MP4 file? It's often more convenient and higher resolution to not be working with GIFs. I don't have to deal with a limited uh, bit space and that's actually pretty easy to do too. There is a few hiccups with it though. So to begin with, instead of using Pillow Writer, we're going to need to use FFmpeg Writer. So if I go ahead and I make this change, if I were to run this as is, you're going to run into a very unusual looking error. If I run it, I will see the system cannot find the file specified. So this kind of obscure error that doesn't really tell you what the problem is, is really telling you that you need to have FFmpeg installed. FFmpeg is a uh, video rendering software that's open source. So if you install this, all you need to do is tell matplotlib where to find this file. In particular, you can of course have it added to your path correctly and then everything should work, but if you're like me and running on Windows, you probably don't have a lot of things added to your DOS path. So we can go ahead and just work around this by telling matplotlib exactly where to find the file we're interested in. We do that by adding a line like this. We edit a environment variable uh, called plt.rcparams and tell it that animation.ffmpeg path is equal to the full path to our ffmpeg file. This is specifically the path to the exe file, and this will let us make our movie file uh, in the mp4 format. So we're going to need to rename our file to mp4, and then we can just go ahead and run this, and we should see that it has generated the file. So uh, we can see we've got our mp4 file, of course, one of the cool things about making animated graphs is you might like to make more complex graphs. So I'm going to illustrate that by adding a few flares to this. First off, we might not have one graph being made, we might like to have two being made. So we can do that just by making a second plot. So if I've got a second line called L2 here, let's go ahead and make this a slightly different one. We'll make it purple with dashed lines. And this one Instead of being a sine graph, let's make it a cosine graph. We'll call it func2. And then all we need to do is make a second ylist variable. So let's go ahead and run the new file. And if we visualize it, we're going to see that we in fact have our two graphs being animated on top of each other in sort of a nice little dance. I'm going to include tutorial code in the GitHub repo below that's going to show you how to make an animated three-dimensional structure as well as how to generate a scatter plot with a line through it. So you can use any of these three examples to do pretty much anything you'd want to do. In the case of the scatter plot and the line fit, it helps convey that you're doing something. You're collecting data sequentially and then you're actually fitting a line to it. I think this helps shows the process of what you're doing in kind of a creative way. Both of these examples are very similar to the one I show here, so I didn't think it was worth going over them on video, but if you have questions about them, I'm of course open to answering them. If you have any questions about today's tutorial, don't forget to throw them in the comments below. I try to get back to them as soon as I can. I'm putting out a tutorial video every couple weeks right now while I'm working on my main AI for video game series. If you want to make sure you don't miss one, don't forget to subscribe to the channel.
Also, if you like this video, please consider liking it as well as subscribing to the channel because these both send signals to the algorithms that this is good content for you. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you next time.